I've been a trucker for over 20 years, crisscrossing the highways of America with my 18-wheeler. Name's Tom, and at 40 years old, I've seen just about everything there is to see on the road. I've driven through blizzards in Montana and traffic jams in New York City, but nothing compares to the eerie stillness of a desert highway at night. It was one of those nights in late summer when the air feels heavy and the horizon shimmers with heat. I was hauling a load of electronics through the California desert, headed east. There was nothing around for miles, just sand, rocks, and the occasional tumbleweed rolling across the road. As I rumbled along the dark highway, my headlights cutting through the night, I saw something up ahead. At first, I thought it was just a mirage, but as I got closer, I saw it was a man standing by the roadside, waving his arms. He looked like he was in trouble, and something in my gut told me to keep driving. But I've always had a soft spot for folks down on their luck, so against my better judgment, I pulled over. The man approached the truck as I rolled down the window. He was in his late thirties, with scruffy hair and clothes that looked like they'd been through the ringer. Hey, man, thanks for stopping, he said, his voice hoarse like he hadn't had water in a while. My car broke down a few miles back. Can you give me a lift to the next town? I hesitated, but then nodded. Sure, hop in. Nearest town's about 30 miles away. He climbed into the passenger seat, and we set off down the road. At first, he seemed grateful, thanking me a few times for picking him up. But as we drove, his demeanor changed. He started fidgeting, glancing around nervously. You out here alone? He asked suddenly, his voice a bit too casual. Yeah, just me and the truck, I replied, trying to keep my tone light. Why do you ask? No reason. Just making conversation, he said, but his eyes didn't meet mine. Something about him was setting off alarm bells in my head. The hairs on the back of my neck prickled with unease. I decided it was time to end this ride early. I'm gonna pull over for a minute, I said, slowing the truck to a stop on the shoulder. Need to check something in the back. I hoped he'd take the hint and get out, but he stayed put. I turned to him, my heart thumping in my chest. I think this is your stop, buddy. His expression darkened, and before I knew it, he pulled out a knife. Hand over your wallet, he demanded, his voice low and dangerous. Panic surged through me, but I knew I couldn't let him see that. With my heart racing, I pretended to reach for my wallet, but instead, I grabbed his wrist and twisted it hard. The knife clattered to the floor of the cab. Fueled by adrenaline, I shoved him against the door. Struggling to keep control, he cursed and tried to fight back, but I managed to reach across and open the passenger door. With one last push, I sent him tumbling out of the truck. I slammed the door shut and floored it, the truck roaring back onto the highway. My hands shook as I drove, the headlights slicing through the darkness. My mind raced with what had just happened, how close I'd come to real danger. I didn't stop until I reached the next town, where I pulled into a truck stop and called the cops. They said they'd send someone to check it out, but I never heard anything more about it. Since that night, I've been more careful about who I pick up on the road. The desert may be vast and empty, but you never know what kind of trouble might be lurking in the shadows. That was the night I learned to trust my instincts, and I've never looked back. I've been driving trucks for over 30 years. My name's Dave, and I'm a 52-year-old trucker from Texas. I've seen just about everything on the road, from wild storms to dodgy truck stops. You learn to be tough out here, but you also learn to trust your gut. It was a hot summer night, and I'd been driving for days, hauling a load of furniture across the country. I was exhausted and needed a break, so I pulled into a truck stop that had a reputation for being a bit sketchy. The neon lights flickered, casting an eerie glow over the lot. A few other rigs were parked there, but it was mostly empty. After parking my truck, I went inside the small convenience store to grab a cup of coffee and a snack. 
The clerk behind the counter gave me a nod, his eyes scanning a lot as if watching for trouble. I didn't think much of it. These places could be rough, but I'd handled myself well over the years. I settled back into my cab, ready to call it the night. I was just starting to drift off when I heard a frantic knocking on the door. It was rapid and desperate, like someone was in real trouble. I sat up quickly, glancing at the clock. It was just past midnight. I grabbed my flashlight and opened the door, peering out into the dim light. Standing there was a woman in her thirties, hair a mess and clothes dirty and torn. She looked terrified. Please, I need help, she said, her voice shaking. Someone's after me. I hesitated for a moment, my instincts kicking in. But there was something in her eyes that seemed genuine, so I decided to help. Get in, I said, pulling the door open wider. She climbed in, breathing heavily, and I locked the doors. Thank you, she whispered, glancing around nervously. I just need to get to the next town. Let's call the cops first, I suggested. If she was in danger, it was better to have the authorities involved. Her eyes widened and she started to protest, but I was already dialing. The dispatcher assured me that officers were on their way, and we sat there in tense silence, waiting. It didn't take long for the police to arrive. Lights flashing as they pulled into the lot. The woman seemed to shrink in her seat, and I noticed her hands trembling. Something didn't feel right, and the cops seemed to know it too. As they approached the truck, the woman suddenly bolted, trying to make a run for it. The officers were quick, though, and they managed to catch her before she got far. One of the officers came over to me, a grim look on his face. Thanks for calling us, he said. You might have just saved yourself a lot of trouble. What do you mean? I asked, my heart pounding with confusion. She's a wanted criminal, the officer explained. Escaped custody a few days ago. She's been hopping rides with truckers to evade capture, leaving a trail of stolen goods and threats behind her. I felt a chill run down my spine. The woman, who had seemed so desperate and in need of help, was actually a dangerous fugitive. I had almost become her unwitting accomplice. The officers took her away, and I watched as the patrol car disappeared into the night. I sat back in my cab, shaken by the encounter. I'd always prided myself on helping others, but this was a stark reminder of how careful I needed to be. As I settled in for the night, I couldn't shake the feeling of how close I'd come to real danger. It was a wake-up call, reminding me that things aren't always what they seem, especially out here on the open road. I locked my doors and double-checked everything before finally letting sleep take over. Grateful to have come out of the situation unscathed. Since then, I've been more cautious about who I trust. The road may be long and lonely, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. It's a lesson learned the hard way, but one I won't forget anytime soon. I'm Mike, a seasoned trucker from Florida, and I've seen my fair share of oddities on the road, but nothing prepared me for the night that still haunts me. It was a typical late night delivery when I noticed a car tailing me closely for miles. I thought, is this guy trying to pass or is he just a terrible driver? Eventually, the car zoomed past me and I shrugged it off. When I arrived at the delivery point, a chill ran down my spine. The same car was parked nearby. I heard footsteps crunching on the gravel behind me. Who's there? I called out, trying to sound braver than I felt. Two men emerged from the shadows, eyes cold and calculating. We want the cargo, one demanded, his voice low and menacing. Why? I stalled, hoping someone would notice us. Before I could react, they lunged at me, fists flying. I hit the ground hard, darkness closing in. When I regained consciousness, my truck was empty, my wallet gone. Panic surged through me as I called the police. Later, they informed me that these men were part of a gang targeting truckers. How long had they been following me? How had I not noticed? 
The open road, once my sanctuary, now felt like a hunting ground, and I was the prey. The feeling of being watched, hunted, and utterly vulnerable gnaws at me every time I climbed back into my truck.